Hey, Bill here with 30 Minute Woodshop. Thanks for joining. Today, I want to show you how to make a Dungeon and Dragons dice vault. Now, my son has all these dice. There's like, there's 12 of these. Plus, he's got a 13th oversized 20, I think it is. Not before I put these away. So he's looking for something other than that, that, that little plastic thing. So all I'm going to do here is kind of st just stack these things up and see what I need width-wise. Because the idea is I'm going to have a clamshell here. Put it down, open it up, about half the uh, depth will be on one side and about half the depth on the other side. Um, I'm not trying to make it as tight as possible, but I want it fairly compact. So this is a this is an inch and a half. So I can get these the, the, the 12 into a piece that's an inch and a half by five. Then I have this monster, which I'm going to set someplace right there, let's say. And that's, that is, that is, 13 16 so 7 8 roughly. And that'll sit right about there someplace with some kind of an offset here just between the two so that when I drill the hole, this is going to be a separate hole. When I drill the hole, it'll be all by itself. Now, got to have sides in this thing, so the sides are going to be about half inch. So I got one and a half by five by, whoop. What have I got here? Six and a half. Yeah, that's six. Let's make it six and a half. All right, one and a half by six and a half. So that's my that's my interior interior dimension. So to that I have to add one inch because I want a half inch in this side and a half inch on that side. So that's one. So that's two and a half. And then what I want to do is I want to have something out here. I don't know if you can see this, but this is a uh, what is it? Three eighths. Yep, three eighths N55 uh, magnet. I want one on each each end, so I need to add like three. If that's three eighths, I want to add three quarters. And you, if you ask why three quarters, because two times three eighths is three quarters. So that's an inch and a half. If I add an inch and a half onto the eight, that's nine and a half inches. So I'm looking for a piece. I'm sorry. Right, jump the gun here. So that's six and a half, and I want to add one and a half to that, so that's eight inches total. So my outside dimensions on this puppy is going to be two and a half by eight. Now, here's the problem I run into with this piece. I already know because when I chopped this thing off in the first place, I kind of made a random cut. I was hoping to be able to get to split it and then get one on each side, top and bottom. Unfortunately, at two and a half inches, I probably can't do that because if you notice, these sides haven't been, haven't been jointed yet. So by the time I get done taking off, uh, you know, an eighth inch there and an eighth inch on this side, plus taking an eighth inch out of the center to split it, this is five inches wide. Yeah. Not even consistent, well. So it's five here and five here, but it's not five in the center. The 16th inch, so there's even a bow in it. All that said, what I'm gonna do is I can't split it and try and save wood. So I'm gonna take this and split it in half this way, size them, cut them out, and then use one for the, one for the top, one for the bottom. That being said, let's go over to the saw and start cutting.
All right, done some initial milling sizing, those kind of things. I got my two blocks that are two and a half wide by eight long. Now what I want to do, I want rounded ends. So all I'm doing is taking the top from a rattle can, pretty darn close. It's a skosh over two and a half inches, but that's perfectly fine. I'm just giving myself something here to uh, use so I could go over to the uh, bandsaw and get the corners curved up. One thing I'm going to do to make sure these are identical is I'm actually going to get some two-faced tape and tape them together and then cut them as a pair. And what that'll do for me is that'll make sure that uh, I have the exact same on both sides. Then I'll come back and do a real quick uh, sanding on them to try and make sure the curves are where they need to be. So let's get these taped together and go over to the bandsaw. I finished a couple things here. First, as I use the CNC to put this dragon in. You, of course, don't need to do that if you don't have a CNC. You can do some hand carving if you want, or you don't have to put anything in, because this is quite frankly, it's a really nice little box with the right wood. In this case, I actually have quilted maple, so it's gonna look pretty good anyway. But you don't have to do that, okay? Now, having done that, I also did a couple other things. I trimmed these up, I failed to mention that earlier. I, uh, I took these, they were seven eighths wide. I took them down to three quarter because it was too bulky um, with two pieces that are seven eighths thick. So with two pieces that are three quarters, it brings it right into uh, a inch and a half, which is pretty nice, should be good. Now the second thing I did is I had this uh, pattern laying around. This is one I used previously for a handhold or a handle for a bench or something. Um, so I just basically did a little modification here, put a couple runners on it to center this, and now I have a, a, uh, a really nice little jig for uh, putting in the uh, depressions here. So my router will run right down through the center of this. I'll be able to route it out real quick, make a couple of these, simple, simple and easy. But why don't you come out in here real quick and I'll show you what this thing actually looks like. You can see how I routed this out with the CNC. It's kind of a cool little dragon. I'm going to come back and actually uh, give this a darker coloration so it stands out better in this really light wood. Um, that'll be in the finishing phase. So and that's pretty good. Um, and I want to show you this too. So you can see what I did here. This was just, like I said, a piece I had laying around that happened to work out for me really well. Um, I did have to put a couple fill pieces in here to shorten it up a little because it was a bit too long. Um, I put a couple runners in here. That just sets the, the width so it always shows up in the middle. And I don't know if you can see these in here, but there's a couple of uh, pencil marks I put in to center, both to center it to make sure it's centered and to get it to centered uh, lengthwise. And by the way, two-phase tape is holding it in. So once I start uh, hitting this with the router, we should be good. That being said, let's go grab the router. Let me show you the router bit I'm going to be using. So this is the white side. I think it's a one and a quarter uh, quart box bit. You can see how that fits in there. Pretty well takes up the entire space. There'll be a little back and forth here, up one side, down the other. Uh, I'm going to be putting it in this Freud two and a quarter horse uh, router. So this is not a plunge router, unfortunately, but that's okay. With this size bit, I'm only taking some small bites. So it won't be a problem. Um, I'm taking about an eighth of an inch at a time. Primarily because this is a monster bit. So I'd say this folks, if you're using a big bit, take it slow and be careful. All right. So let me get this in here and uh, we'll come back and do some routing. You can see I got everything set up here. Next step is I want to throw a real quick eighth inch round over on these just to give it a nice soft feel. Because I, when you pick it up, I don't want it to be very hard and sharp. So I've got an eighth, an inch, eighth of an inch router bit in here. 
I kick it on. Now that's done, I'm gonna hit it with a, actually I'm gonna hit it with 220 just to take off the sharp edges so it's rounded. Because the router bit leaves a little bit of a sharp edge so you can kind of see that sharp edge. Just blends it up a little better. Now with a 220, it doesn't take doesn't take much. Now I'm going to 320 to smooth it all out again. And there we go. 220, 320, it feels really nice. Next step is I'm gonna throw some, sit, some stain on this. Let's get busy. What I'm doing now is throwing on a light coat of uh, Minwax Golden Pecan. The reason I'm doing this is it helps bring out, I don't know, you probably can't see it here, but there's a lot of striations in this. So it's like tiger striped. You get a really nice, by putting the uh, stain on, you get a real nice tiger stripe because it, it absorbs uh, stain in different, uh, at different rates. So you get this really nice pattern. It's gonna be pretty cool. So I'm just throwing this on, it's a fairly light stain, but I wanted to give it some color anyway because uh, the uh, maple's pretty pale. And this is a pretty fast operation. Takes a couple hours for it to dry though. And you can see whenever I drop it into the uh, dragon here, it really brings it out, darkens that up, makes it nice and dark so you can see it. And there you go. Now we just want to wipe it off a little bit, get rid of the excess. Yep. So I made one of these for my son and one for his friend Rob, because I thought Rob might actually appreciate it and enjoy it. And there you go. Let these dry for a couple hours. We'll throw on, uh, once it dries, I'm gonna throw on some uh, Spray lacquer. I'll throw three coats of spray lacquer. We don't need a real heavy finish on this because this is good, basically an inside, you know, on the counter kind of kind of a piece of equipment. Uh, so I don't need that film building from a polyurethane. But like I said, a couple hours, come back, we'll throw some lacquer on it. We'll call it done. Oh, one thing I didn't mention. <clears throat> so I don't know if you notice here, but I drilled a couple holes in here. These are eight millimeter holes for eight millimeter by three millimeter uh, magnets. That's what's gonna hold the whole thing together. So we'll put it together, drop those in there, put some super glue on it. They aren't ever coming out. Now I will say if you do this, you have to have a metric, uh, you have to have a metric uh, drill, drill bit. In this case, eight millimeter, I said 10 millimeters too, but I think the eight will do better. To get these open, you're gonna have to slide them in order to break that, uh, that magnetic bond. It should be pretty good. So, you miss seeing that, but that's just drilling a couple holes on the drill press, so no real big deal. Now we'll come back, throw some spray lacquer on this, and we'll be done with the project. This d, &D dice vault turned out really well. I'm really happy with the result from this uh, CNC carved dragon. Uh, CNC, I can't believe how easy that thing is to use. But you don't need a CNC. If you notice, this is a quilted maple. So all you need to do is choose a piece of uh, wood that has some really nice grain to it 
and you don't even need this. It's still going to be a phenomenal piece. Like I said, so I went in cherry here. Easy to open. You give them a quick, slight twist and, and pull. Full brace of dice. Easy, easy, easy. Goes back together. Here's a trick, though. Make sure you put the, put the magnets in right. <laughs> Once you get the magnets in and you get them glued in there, if you got them upside down, you're, gonna, you're in trouble. So make sure you do that correctly. Unfortunately, I did run out of 8mm dice or 8mm magnets. So I got to finish this dice vault up a little bit later. Also, too, I love the cherry, but I think I'm going to come back in here and paint this either gold or silver. Tell you what, if you can, <laughs> let me know what you think, gold or silver. Drop a comment in and let me know. Or red or yellow, I don't know. Black. I don't think black would look good. Anyway, drop a comment. Tell me what you think I should do that. Um, like I said, fun, easy project. Very simple and quick to build. Not a problem here. Um, couple pieces of, take your pick. Maple, walnut, cherry. Go exotic with Brazilian, Brazilian, uh, Brazilian cherry or something like that. Purple heart. Um, you can make a really nice... D&D &D dice vault for your son, your daughter, your nephews, even for yourself if you play the game. I used to, but I haven't played D&D &D in a long time, back in college. Anyway, like I said, easy to do. Check out the links in the bottom. There's a link down there to the Fox Alien CNC that I used. Super easy to put together and you start using. Boy, I tell you what, I have no experience. This is probably my third project, so take a look. Pick one up and give it a shot. Very economical to get yourself into doing some uh, CNC work. They also have a laser module that goes with it. Um, also, there's links down, to thing, down there for things like the tools and materials I use, the magnets and whatnot, uh, th the router bits. You can check those out in case you need something like that. And uh, uh, last, there's also a link in my blog. All right, so go to the blog. You'll find a dimension sketch for this. Go ahead, download that, and you can make the project super easy. Like I said, once you've made a, a uh, template like this, you can pop these things out every 10 or 15 minutes, other than finishing. All right. So I've got about four coats of lacquer on these things. Boy, it really is nice and smooth, shiny, looks really good. I think the folks getting these are going to be very happy with them. So hopefully you got something out of this. If you did, do me a favor and hit like and subscribe. And hey, until next time. Good making.